Hello, everyone. Welcome to a theater talk with Scott. I saw today Leopold Sat. It is a new play by Tom Stoppard. And wow. Oh my God, you guys. Now, I'm a fan of Tom Stoppard. Um, Tom Stoppard is a playwright. Um, he's, uh, well, he's written screenplays, he's written for television uh, since the 1960s. Um, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern are dead. Um, Travesties. Um, Arcadia, I think, was the first play I ever read and how I got introduced to Tom Stoppard. Um, it was in Jacksonville University, actually, when I was in college. And um, one of my professors, Debbie Jordan, um, was directing that play uh, at Players by the Sea in Jacksonville. And I went to see it because it's always good to, you know, support your professor, right? You know, <laughs> um, but keep them happy. And uh, and I was like, I, I remember watching the play. I was, you know, in my early 20s and I was, I can't remember who I was with. I was with a friend, but I, I don't think it was um, Jill or Debbie. And that's who I usually went to stuff with. Um, anyway, and the play ended and I went, Huh? I was such a naive, stupid kid. I didn't, I didn't get it. So then I went, but I'm like, oh, you know. So anyway, then I did. I, I read it and, and studied it and I learned, you know. Um, you know, I'm not a big professional uh, theater guy. I, I mean, I, I went to college uh, and studied it and I've had a lot of great teachers and I read and I I try to educate myself um but you know I, I i don't anyway um so anyway tom stoppard who and i like his stuff i do um has a new play leopold stott and i read just a little bit about it and i knew it was a type of um oh what's the word that spans over you know multi-generations uh, epic um type story and I knew that it was about a Jewish family. And that's all I knew, really. Um, so it is a, and we meet in 1899. Um, this family, the Rosenblums, and it's several names. So the names kept changing. Um, and it's a very large family in Vienna, in Austria. And they're a wealthy family. They're kind of assimilated. There's a Christmas tree. But they're confused because even like the the one of the sons or the grandson if you will um has been decorating the tree he puts the star of david on top of the tree and they all are like oh you know we all laugh and they're like that's the wrong star and um and, and so then they you know put the right star but um and we see them later at a, at a uh, passover seder um and but there's the there's Tr intrigue and there's relationship stuff and there's marriages and there's cheating and there's falling in love but at the core of it all is this study of this discussion of what it means to be Jewish and how the world treats Jewish and how like one of the main brothers he is now Catholic he married a Catholic girl and he's turned his back on on being Jewish but yet he's not really because he still celebrates stuff at home and they talk about how people refer to Jews and and there's, it's heartbreaking um, because then you go forward into the 1920s and there's a very um, unfortunate scene where they're doing a brisk for one of the, the young children um, who we meet much later, Nathan. And we meet um, Nathan as a, you know, early teenager um, in, I think it's probably the late 30s. And we watch as this family ages and the different actors and different people. And um, now it's, I mean, we know. This is one of the things that, that I think Tom Stopper does really well is you're in on the joke or not necessarily the joke, the story from the whole time. You know history. We know what happens to these Jews. You know it. Um, and if you don't, if you are one of those crazy people that think the Holocaust didn't happen, get the f off my YouTube and my Facebook now. Bye. Because it happened. And the world lost six million stories. Lives. So it happened. 
and you know when you're sitting there watching this large, loving, f fun family, and they get poorer and poorer, and now they're waiting for the knock on the door that you know is coming where they are stripped from everything and taken away to camps. Um, and that's where we meet the, the teenage version of the little baby who there was a big debate. Is he going to get clipped or not? And it's a very funny scene. And the poor unfortunate uh, businessman who shows up who's not Jewish. And they mistake him for the doctor to perform the brisk. And, um, <laughs> and well, they, they figure out that he's not the doctor. Well, not everybody figures it out. And so they're smoking. And he said, oh, I can have a cigar. And he's like, yes. And he's like, um, do you have a cigar clipper? And the mother of the baby who's trying to decide whether to, you know, do that or not. It's hysterical. Um, and Stoppard writes a lot of good comedy into a very sad story that we're going on this journey and we know where we're headed. And yet, do we? Because, yes, the knock on the door comes. And this teenage Nathan is going to be taken away. By the way, I'm using him as an example. There is no lead in this play. There's no, um, it's a it's a humongous ensemble of brilliant actors, lots of children. Um, and then you go to 1955, where this whole humongous family has been reduced to three. And... Um, Nathan is still one of the three. Um, and there is the young Leo, who was a very young boy in when the Nazis came and took them away. But he was taken to England um, by his uh, mother and the man she married, uh, his, his stepfather, and raised non-Jewish. And he's back. And it's just the three in Vienna and it's lots to digest and lots to discuss along with this very important painting of their aunt Gretel who was the Catholic she was the first non-Jewish person in the family and quite important and the painting was stolen during the war and then they see it in a museum and they're trying to get it back because it's their family and um, that aunt writes down for Leo um, the family tree so he can remember and as he's reading them she's saying Auschwitz Dachau killed on the war march killed in the street and and reciting what happened to all of these family members um, there was a line that stood out to me and I'm remembering it and it said and it was to Leo because he was taken away early and not part of what happened. And um, Nathan says to him, you live as if you have no history, as if you cast no shadow. How can you not love Tom Stafford? He writes like that. That's beautiful. Um, and I think that's kind of one of the things that really, and I love his work because he, we're part of this story. We know what's going on. So I, I'm like, where's the vulnerability at, right? I'm, I'm not vulnerable. I'm an, I'm an observer to this story. And then he writes, brings lines like that. And then Leo says to his cousins, but this can't happen again. <laughs> and jump to 2022. The anti-Semitism going on in today's world is very heavy. I see it more than just anti-Semitism. I'm taking nothing away from the Jews and what has been done to that race. Um, but it is a low, total disrespect for people and for history um, and for compassion 
and for acceptance and tolerance. Wow, this play is so cool. Guys, go see it. Leopold Stat. Um, I probably made it sound a lot more depressing than it is. Um, I did not leave there ready to skip and sing for joy, but I didn't leave morose either. I didn't leave sad. Did I cry? Of course I did. Um, was I moved? Very much so. Um, I loved it. It is brilliant acting. It is a wonderful play. I give it all stars, all thumbs up. Go see Leopold Stott at the Longacre Theater. Um, it's playing, I don't know, I, check it because I'm sure it's a limited run. Um, most plays are right now, but I'm sure it's running at least a couple more months. It just opened. Um, go see it. All right. That's Theater Talk with Scott on this one. And I'll have another one coming up later tonight.